Yo, what's up guys, Complies here. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over a few OBS settings. There's been a lot of people asking me how I get mine to run so smooth, how it looks so good. So I'll be sharing that with you guys. I'll also be sharing a few other tricks outside of OBS that we can do. Now, just a quick disclaimer, this tutorial is not gonna be on how to get the best quality overall for your stream. If you're looking to get the absolute best quality, go look at the hundreds of other tutorials on YouTube. This one is gonna be more tailored on how to get the best quality while also maintaining good performance in game, which will probably be better for most people, especially if you're playing an FPS or any other competitive title so just keep that in mind some of these settings are going to be a little different than what you see in most tutorials but before i show you guys all this stuff please remember to leave a like and a comment if you enjoy my content don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss any future videos also as of this week i do now have channel memberships enabled so if you guys want to support me even more you can join that there's three tiers links to all my social medias will be in the description below most importantly do not forget to follow my twitch where i stream apex just about every day that's it for that now we can get right into the video so before we do anything if you guys are using streamlabs obs i just strongly recommend steering away from that. Now the reason for this is because Streamlabs uses a lot of CPU and takes a lot of unnecessary resources that regular OBS Studio and Stream Elements OBS do not do. So if you're moving over from Streamlabs, I'd strongly recommend checking out Stream Elements. It's a great platform. I've been using it for about three years after switching over from Streamlabs. It's super simple and it doesn't hog those unnecessary resources. But if you guys don't want any of the extra plugins, you guys can just download the regular OBS, which it still has the plugins for Twitch so you get your activity feed, you get your chat, etc. But if you do want just a little bit extra, I'd recommend going with Stream elements so after you guys have downloaded that or if you already have it downloaded before we go into obs we're going to do a quick trick so we go down to our windows search bar or wherever our stream elements is located i'm just going to type in obs then we're going to right click open file location and then we're going to do the same thing again right click open file location and then down here where it says obs 64 we're going to right click we're going to go to properties compatibility we're going to check run this program as administrator then you hit apply then you hit okay now once we've done that we can open up our obs now so now that we're in obs i'm going to be going over the settings with you guys so just come down to this go to settings now there's not really much to change in general this is all just personal preference stuff you know do you want it to record when you stream do you want it to stop recording when you stop streaming etc stuff like that yeah nothing too important in the general tab now we're going to go down to our stream tab now this is where you select whatever server you're using you know i use twitch so let's do that server leave it to recommended two three years ago it probably would have been better to manually enter your server but just leave it on auto it finds the best one for you it's easy, it's simple. Twitch chat add-ons is going to be up to you. I'd recommend enabling better TTV and frank your faces just so you can get more emotes. It's a little bit better for your community. It gives kind of a better vibe in chat. But if you don't want to, then don't do it. But I'd recommend doing it. Ignore streaming service setting recommendations. You want to make sure this is checkmarked. This will allow you to surpass that cap of 6,000 bitrate. And it'll also allow you to put your audio bitrate as high as you want. So you definitely want to make sure that this is checked. Next, we're going to be going to our output tab. Now, I'm only going to be going over the streaming and audio tabs because this guide is going to be more centered toward live streaming. Eventually, I may do one for replay buffer and recording, but for now, this is just going to be purely for live streaming. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure we have the right encoder set. If you guys are on a single PC setup, I'd strongly recommend to use your guys' GPUs encoder. If you're in NVIDIA, it's going to be NVENC. If you guys are on AMD, I believe it's called the H.264 encoder or something like that. So you guys just want to make sure that you choose that. Don't choose the X264 unless you have a really strong CPU or you're on a dual stream PC setup. Even if you do have a good CPU, I'd still recommend going with the GPU encoder on a single PC setup. There's going to be a lot more input delay and you're going to lose a lot more FPS versus if you're just using a GPU encoder. But if you don't care about performance, you don't care about your frames, you just want the best looking stream possible, then yeah, X264 could be better for you. But for most people, we're going to be using the GPU encoder. Rescale output you want to make sure that this is unchecked and i'll be going over why here in a bit but for now we're just going to leave this unchecked rate control you want to make sure it's cbr all live streaming is going to be constant bitrate now bitrate this is where it gets kind of interesting most people seem to think that the max bitrate for twitch is 6,000. this is just the recommended amount you can go all the way up to 8,000. i've tried going past 8,000, but once you go past it twitch throttles you and your stream starts to drop frames really bad so i wouldn't recommend going any higher than 8,000. currently i have mine set at 7,700. and when you add my video bitrate to my audio bitrate it comes out to right around 8,000. Keyframe interval should be set to 2. Not sure my mind's at 0, but yeah, you want to make sure this is set at 2. Preset, I'd recommend using any of these except for max quality. The only time I would say it's okay to use max quality is if you're playing a really slow paced game and there's not a whole lot of graphics to render. Now, the reason I say this is because max quality enables two pass encoding, which is going to give you more input delay and lower your FPS a little bit more. There isn't too big of a difference between these. Obviously, quality is going to look better than max performance, but the difference is minuscule, especially when you're upping that bitrate to compensate for it. Personally, I like to run 
run mine at low latency performance because that gives me the highest frames possible with the least amount of input delay. Profile, you want to make sure this is set to main. I disable look ahead, disable psychovisual tuning. I disable psychovisual tuning because I was dropping a lot of frames in Apex. And I noticed that once I turned this off, it got a whole lot better. So if you guys are dropping frames, this could be a potential reason right here. But once we're done with all of this, we're going to hit apply. Now we're going to go over to our audio tab. Now I run 320 audio bit rate. There's not really any reason to be running a low audio bit rate. It's just going to make your stream sound like crap for no reason. So I would recommend 256 and up. If you're having problems, you could drop it down to 192, but I would not go any lower than that as there's not really any reason. It's not that hard for your computer to process your audio and to send out that audio bit rate at a higher value. It's not going to be too much trouble. So for most people, I'd recommend 256 or 320. I run 320, so that's what I do. Go down here, hit apply. Now we go down to our audio tab. This is going to be mostly dependent on you guys. My desktop audio comes out of my sound card. It's the HyperX virtual surround sound. I make sure that's enabled. I use a Blue Daddy microphone. I just come down here and pick that Yeti stereo microphone. And that's it for that. Now let's go to the video tab. Now this is the part where I feel a lot of people mess up. Now a lot of people have this set to 1920 by 1080 and then they have their scaled resolution set to 1920 by 1080 and in their output and in their output, they'll have their rescale output right here. Now the only reason that I recommend you doing this is if you're recording and streaming at the same time, which I know a good amount of people are, but personally I've noticed that using my streaming settings while recording with something else like Shadowplay gives me a much better performance boost compared to streaming and recording at the same time on OBS. That's personally what I do, but if you guys do prefer to have all your other live stream elements in there, like your chat, your notifications, all your filters, everything else that is already in your OBS versus just plain raw clips that you get with Shadowplay, I totally get that. I'm just trying to help you guys get the best performance, but leaving your base resolution and then rescaling everything is going to put a lot more load on your GPU or whatever encoder you're using. So that's why I recommend to leave this unchecked and leave our base and canvas resolution the same because there's no scaling going on it's all just one thing so it's going to run a lot more smooth and you'll get much better performance but however if you are recording and streaming at the same time then you know go ahead do your rescale but just know that's going to take a little bit more of a performance hit than what i do so i'm going to uncheck that we'll go back into the video tab now real quick i just want to talk to you guys about resolutions i see a lot of people running their streams at 900p this is sort of a problem because 900p isn't a true 16 by 9 resolution now the reason for that is that 900 isn't divisible by 8 in order for a resolution to be truly 16 by 9 both numbers have to be divisible by 8 which is why I always recommend people to stream on 936p, 864p, or 720p. That's going to give you a little bit better performance than if you were streaming something like 1600 by 900. Now real quick, I'll put on the screen the numbers for each of those resolutions for 936, 864, and 720. Personally, I use 864p, but if you guys have a really high-end system, you could do 936. However, I definitely recommend to stay away from 1080p, as even 8000 bitrate isn't really enough to keep up with 1080p. It's going to be very pixelated in high motion situations, which is basically what all of Apex is. So bumping that down to 936 or 864 is going to give you a much better picture than if you were using 1080. So in order to change that, we're just going to highlight that, delete, type in 1536 x 864, and we can copy that. And we can paste it in right here as well. So now our canvas and scale resolution are now the same. Now we'll go to our downscale filter. It's best to leave this on 36 samples if you have a decent PC. However, I drop it down to 16 just so I can get a little bit extra performance. And for FPS, generally you want to leave this at 60. If your PC is struggling to keep up or if you don't have the best internet, you could drop that down to 50 or even 30 if you really have to. However, I'd recommend to just keep this on 60. So now we'll hit apply. Now we'll go down to the advanced tab. This one's important. You want to make sure the process priority is on high. Now we'll scroll down a little bit. For sources, I like to uncheck this. If you guys didn't know, hardware acceleration uses your GPU to speed up processes. So there will be a very slight performance hit. While it is minuscule, it's still there. So I'd recommend to keep that unchecked unless you guys are having trouble running certain sources, then checking that could possibly help. But for most people, I'd recommend to leave it unchecked. Now for our network settings, I'm not too familiar with these. I just leave them all unchecked. However, checking them might actually be beneficial. I might try that out here soon. However, this is more related to your network, but I'm more so just giving you hardware specific tips. These look like they could be good. I just have them unchecked. So play around with that if you guys want to. So now we're done with this. So we'll hit apply and then we'll hit okay. One important tip that most people know, but not everybody does, is that when you're streaming, you need to turn this preview off. It's really simple. All you have to do to do that is right click where it says enable preview. You just uncheck that. That's going to make your game feel so much better already when you're streaming. Now, that's, like I said, that's really simple. A lot of people know about it, but there is quite a bit of people who don't. So yeah, just make sure you do that every time you're streaming and you're playing the game. You know, if you do need to look at something, make sure everything's running okay, you just right click it again, enable, and then disable it when you're done. So now that we're done with that, I'm going to show you guys a couple of extra things that you can do to help your OBS run smooth. So the first thing that we're going to do is disable Windows game mode. So we'll go down to our Windows search bar, we'll type in game mode, go to game mode settings, 
and right here you just want to make sure game mode is checked to off the reason you want to make sure that game mode is checked to off is when this is enabled it's going to take extra resources from your pc and put them towards your game to make your game run better but what this does to obs is it takes the resources that it needs to run your stream smoothly which can result in a lot of drop frames this made a big difference for me so definitely make sure we have this unchecked next we'll go to our xbox game bar make sure that your game bar is set to off next we'll go down to captures make sure recording in the background is turned off record audio turned off just make sure everything is unchecked in these now once we've done that i'm going to show you guys a little program called pre so the link to this will be in the description below. What Prio is, is it saves the process priority of certain programs in your task manager because for some reason, even when you set your OBS to run on high in your settings tab, it's not truly running at high priority. So downloading Prio will make sure that it's locked to high process priority whenever you boot your OBS up. So we're going to download Prio. We're going to run the application. Hit next. Next. Install. Next. Now you guys are going to have to restart your computer in order for this to take effect. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you guys when you get back. Okay, so now that you guys are back, we're going to open up our task manager. In order to do that, we'll just go down to our window search bar, type in task manager. We're going to go over to our details tab and we're going to scroll until we see our OBS 64. Now I have two OBSs running at the moment just because I have my recording one and then I have the one that I'm showing you guys on. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our OBS. Now you should see a couple of new settings here. We're going to make sure that we have save priority checked. Then we're going to go to set CPU priority and we're going to click high. We're gonna hit change priority. Then when you're done with that, we're done. It's locked to high priority. So every time that you boot it back up, it's gonna save that. Okay guys, so that's gonna be it for that. So I really hope this can help you guys. If it does, remember to leave a like and comment. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I do have channel memberships enabled. So by joining that, it's gonna help me a lot more in continuing to do this and make videos for you guys. Links to all my other social medias will be in the description below. I have Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, a growing Discord. If you guys have any questions, Discord's a great way. If you're just looking for a good community to join, please be sure to follow my Twitch where I stream Apex just about every day now. We are full time. So I have been streaming a lot more, but that's gonna be it for me guys. Like I said, these settings have helped me a ton so i really hope that they can help you too i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day peace